Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to take out my rear heater and aircon kind of system. Uh, it doesn't work, as I said in the last video. Um, it's never worked since I've bought the van, so there's no real use for it. The actual heater matrix actually packed up quite earlier in the uh, van ownership because I had a, a coolant leak, which is quite a common one on these vehicles where it, it happens down the side. You'll see it dripping out underneath from, uh, from the heater matrix. And you can just literally bypass those two pipes. You just put a, a straight through connection and, um, and that solves the problem. You don't get any heat in the back, but it's not a big issue. Um, so I'm going to remove it today because I want to free up this space and use it for maybe a diesel heater and storage and things like that. So yeah, well, let's get taken out. Apparently it's easy, but let's find out. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to remove a uh, part of the floor because it's obstructing the uh, rear heater there. So I've got to take the plastic covers off and that will enable me to take that bit of floor out. And this isn't actually as easy as I thought it was going to be, as you'll see in a minute. So that's the, that's the part of the floor I need to get out. Um, I can see at the top that it's actually joined um, and I get to see how my floor has been put down because this was put in by a different company. Now you'll see here, ooh, that's how it comes out. I can see now it's actually made out of MDF. Interesting choice, which is, you know, no bad thing. So this is where I'd really try and get these uh, plastic strips out and uh, that's not just, that's not budging. And it turns out they have been completely glued into place. And I know why, because it is quite difficult to fit the floors and those plastic strips in. But I just rip it out, as you saw there. Now there's these three bolts in the top, which I'll remove in a little bit. But the first thing I've got to do is actually unplug all the wires. So that's what I do. Set about unplugging these wires. Now most of them have just got these little clips which hold them in. Some of them are easily accessible. Some of them not so much. Uh, there's one at the end which is really quite difficult to get out of, which is one um, not, which, yeah, that, that one's quite easy. It's this next one which I found really difficult. I think it might be easier to get it out when it's actually half removed. Um, I'm actually repositioning all the wires. Um, so I'm gonna take all the little clips out that are securing them to the wall. Um, there's a wire that goes over the top of the unit here, which is on these kind of uh, cable ties, and that needs unclicking as well. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna reroute the cables so they're completely out of the way because I'm gonna use it for storage. Uh, one thing to note here is you've got to be really careful cutting the cable clips off. Just you don't want to accidentally cut a wire and have to repair the wire. Uh, wouldn't be the end of all days, but you know, just got to be a bit careful. So now I've uh, got everything unplugged. It's time to go underneath and this is not too bad a job again. It's um, There's three nuts which you have to undo. Sometimes these can be completely crusted up with under seal or they could just be completely rusted in there. Mine were pretty good, I'll be honest with you. I think these are 10 millimeter, these ones. I think you only need a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter socket to get this whole thing out. Um, there's my AC pipes, which I've got to uh, disconnect as well. But as you can see, I've taken all the nuts off now. There's one there, there's one in the middle. And now it's time to remove the AC pipes. These are a bit of a pain. Um, I had to get a screwdriver in there, lever them off. I wasn't worried about damaging these because I'm not going to be using them anymore in the back, so not not such a bad thing. Um, I say they are a bit tricky to get off. You have to give a good old, good old pull to get that off. Boom, and that's the air conditioning pipes now removed. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a, a message at the end of the video about air conditioning and the uh, the coolant refrigerant that's inside it, so please watch that. Um, so I'm moving on to the actual coolant side now, so not to get mixed up with the AC, this is the coolant to kind of like heat up the rear heater matrix. As I said, mine had a leak many years ago. I disconnected it, as you can see there's just pipe sticking at the bottom there, and this has got a bypass uh, loop in it. As you can see, it was copper, but now it's just black. But um, I just I just cable tied it back up to the uh, the little nubs that are sticking out there, and obviously that won't allow the uh, heater matrix to come out if they're all connected. So got to get rid of them. So now it's time to get back inside and take those last three bolts out, and we're nearly there. So 
of the whole unit literally just lifts out. As you can see my face, I'm a little bit like, what? That's it. And the main uh, thing is just freeing it from all the cables. So that's it, I've actually got it out. Um, it looks a bit filthy there. So, well, what we're gonna do now is we've got to stare down the hole and see what we see. Ugh, it looks disgusting in there. Oh my God, look at all that. So as you can see, there is a bit of rust there, but that's kind of like over by the sills. The kind of like the bottom pan area doesn't look too bad at the moment. Um, I'm going to have to clean it out and find out. So first thing I do is grab the drill and I get I just set to work on it. Um, I've got like a wire brush attachment thing. And I'm just going to knock off some of the rust and just see how bad this is. And it's not looking too bad on those bits, but watch what happens in a second. Any second now. Oh, there it is. Yep. I've just put a new hole in the bongo. <laughs> uh, bongos. Hmm. So let's check out my, my new addition to the van. Um, yeah, it's about a finger size hole. It's really common for the uh, bongos to rust out actually in this area. Um, but I'm going to clean it out and I'm going to get a proper look at the state of things. So, ooh, a bit of a hoover cam. So one thing this obviously removing all this out of here gives you a really good look down into it and you can kind of repair a lot of uh, the damage that you can that you get from a uh, rusty sills and it makes it a lot easier to weld in the area because you're not going to destroy anything i've seen pictures of people have actually destroyed that rear heater matrix because they've been welding near there and it's just it's uh, obviously caught fire and the whole thing has melted <laughs> so a bit of a disaster really So I just keep on cleaning. Um, now I can get a really good view of the uh, the scale of the uh, the size of everything that's down there. Um, but I think it's looking pretty good actually. Like I say, a lot of a lot of them do actually rust out on that bottom pan bit there where the rear heater matrix just sits on. Um, so I'm pretty pleased that it looks pretty good on mine. Um, but yeah, just giving a good old good old thorough cleaning. So that's looking nice and beautiful. So now it's all clean. I can see what is damaged and what was dirt. And uh, yeah, I've got a, quite a bit of uh, repair work to do on that bit down there. But uh, generally, I think it's all right. I can see my old welding patch that I did before. So yeah, it gives me a good look into what needs to be done. So I've removed everything out of the way and now I've got a great big uh, trough, which is phenomenal. Um, I think the size of it all is is quite amazing, actually. Um, it's just bigger than you think it's going to be. Um, there's plenty of room, like I say, if I want to go for the diesel heater in here. I wish I didn't have to put it in here. I wish I could put it under the passenger seat because this is such a good space that when I've actually done my conversion into here, I'm going to utilize all the space. And it'd be good if I could go down as well, but I think I'm going to end up filling it up with stuff, really. Um, I'm thinking possibly even my waste water tank might go down in there, um, just to set, free up room in other places. But whether that's going to be possible, I don't know. Um, I've got lots of ideas. They're all kind of like um, this changing every time I, I think about it. Um, I've already started actually building the conversion now, so I'll show you that in the next video. But one thing I will touch on is the AC pipes. So that's something I've got to do. Uh, as, as you saw me, I disconnected them. Now, when you do disconnect the AC pipes before you even get to that point, you've got to make sure you've got all of the refrigerant out of the AC system. And that's going to be done by a company. Mine was completely empty. It's been empty for years. So I knew I was all right to take them off. Um, but yeah, you've got to get it properly uh, discharged of all the fluid uh, because it is actually legal to discharge AC refrigerant into the air. Um, so don't do it folks, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's something I've got to do. I think you've got to basically get them capped off 
or crimped or something welded shut. Uh, you could do it under the passenger seat. I've seen some pictures, but I'm not 100% about it. So I've got to do a bit more research on that and ask some questions. The one thing I will say is that once I've actually shortened those uh, air conditioning pipes and got them capped off, I'm actually going to be refilling the AC system again because um, I do want to use it. It's nice to have it in the front. I've not had it for a few years now. So once I've got that done, I will be refilling it. So you can use it in the front still. I'm going to tidy up the pipe work for the coolant as well because it's a bit of a mess under there. So I think if I can shorten all that, have less things to go wrong, I think that'll be pretty good. So I'll look into that and I'll get that sorted too, but I just don't have time on this video. So um, yeah, so I think for this one, I think I've done everything I need to do for now. Um, probably jump over to actually building the conversion. Then I can see what I need to do here because I'm a little bit unsure. So best to build something and then I'll find out. Yeah, so. I'm well happy with that. Um, so I'll see you in the next video and uh, we'll get on with the conversion. So thanks for watching. I'll see you.